You remember in one of the Batman movies when the Joker was like, you wanna know how I got this scar? I'm gonna do the same thing. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't, but I got a little scar on my hand right here. You wanna know how I got this scar? Now this is something that happened way back. I got into a fight. Now the story about the fight, that's a whole nother story itself. And I'll share that with you. It's like another one of those Welcome to America stories. But this right here, I'll tell you how I got the scar. Um, I got into a fight when I was a kid. And of course, I didn't want to um, tell my parents. Now being young and dumb, I didn't even know how to fight anyways. So instead of punching with these two knuckles, this is where you should be hitting people. I'm not teaching you how to fight now, but you should be punching people with these two knuckles. But unfortunately, I hit somebody in the hardest part of the body, which is the head, <laughs> with this knuckle right here. And it broke my bone. And uh, the bone didn't completely slap, snap in half, but it, it shifted all the way up. My knuckle went away and it was pushing up the, um, the, the meat, I guess, the hand. And again, I was scared to tell my parents that I got into a fight. So what did I tell them? I told them that um, my hand got stuck in a door. Okay, so um, I just said, yeah, somebody closed the door and my hand was there and ouch, it, it slammed my hand. And um, of course they were worried, so they took me to see a doctor. But unfortunately, they didn't take me to see a Western doctor. Um, because if you're dealing with any type of bone injuries, I would assume you'd go to see a Western doctor. Um, being from a Chinese family, my family took me to see a Chinese medicine doctor. And um, so when he first saw my hand, he just saw that it was swollen. He thought it was swollen because of how the bone was pressing up on uh, against my hand. And um, he thought it was a, uh, a bruise or some, something like that. And so the first, his, his first instinct was to see where I felt pain. So um, this is what he did next. And I can't even demonstrate from this hand because I still have uh, bad memories from it. But basically he took the finger and he rotated it like that. And while he was doing, while he was doing that, he said, does this hurt? And when he finished saying that, my bone snapped in half. Now I need surgery. This mother didn't realize that this could have been a bone injury and he snapped my bone in half. Of course, it's my fault. I got into the fight. I lied to my parents, but damn, he was supposed to have some type of medical knowledge and he rotated my finger and it snapped it in half. And now I need to get surgery. So I went to see a Western doctor eventually. They had to cut my hand open, put a, put a pin into my hand to hold it steady. I felt like Wolverine at the time because I had a metal pin in my hand for, for months and months to hold my hand together. And that's how I got the scar. Now I'm traumatized. I'll never go see a Chinese medicine doctor again. I don't even get acupuncture. But basically I'm telling you this is, you might get traumatized because you have a bad experience you've had with PTE. And you don't want to deal with that anymore. But by far, PTE is still the easier test. So you can't run away from this. So one bad experience, multiple bad experiences, maybe it's the person you were working with, maybe it's the technique you're using, but one way or the other, you're gonna get through this. So let's get this. Okay, it's Wednesday and I'm posting another video for score assessments. And as I mentioned in the previous video, if you message me on Instagram, Facebook, or even WhatsApp, I'm not gonna be able to assess your scores for you. Um, I do this on a weekly basis and I'll take it from the, um, the comments and the videos. And I usually try to take it from the first day, but for this week, um, maybe not many people need it anymore, then I'll just stop making the videos. But for this week, there weren't as many um, comments and there were more than enough though, more than enough for me to take the comments. However, some of the formatting is kind of weird. It's not the, the original format of the scores. So I don't really um, try to see and dissect what you're trying to write. So please follow the, the, the correct format and then it'll be easier for me to read for you. Um, and in order for you to, to get alerts on when I post these videos, you gotta subscribe. And when you subscribe, hit that bell. You're gonna get a notification when I post any videos and you're gonna be one of the first people to post your scores and that is gonna be highly likely that I'm gonna assess your score for you, all right? So let's get into this. 
Uh, we're gonna take a look at a score that's heartbreaking. And recently I got my students doing the same thing. Everything is over the points that they need except for one module. And it's only one point shy. That is heartbreaking. So let's take a look at the score and see what we can do to get that additional point as soon as possible. The first person we have here is Boo Boo. I'm not even sure if that's your name. I'll just say Boo Boo. Now, you got 78 in the reading. And that's the only thing that's missing, right? 78 in the reading. Everything else is over 79. We are cutting it a little bit close with that writing. So one of the first things that would jump out would be that reading and writing fill in the blanks because you can cover both sides. If you improve that reading and writing fill in the blanks, you also improve the writing if you feel like it's a risk to leave it at 80. So you want to try to improve both at the same time. And that task, reading and writing fill in the blanks, can improve both. But besides that, another thing that I noticed would be the summary writing. Now, I can't tell which summary is not performing um, well, but it seems like it is the summarized written text because you got such a high listening. Well, 82. Now, if you improve the summarized written text, that will also improve the writing slightly and improve the reading slightly. So again, we're looking at the easiest way to get the additional points. So the two tasks that affect both sides, reading and writing fill in the blanks, and the summarized written text. I hope that helps. All right, the next score we're gonna take a look at, it's quite common for many people because we're actually shooting for 79, but unfortunately, none of the modules are at 79. So what do we need to improve? Let's take a look. Okay, here we have Gapash. I'm pretty sure I said that completely wrong, so please forgive me. Um, we need 79. Unfortunately, none of the modules are at 79. Now, one thing that stands out to me is that speaking score. Because you got 74 in the speaking, but you have very high pronunciation. So that shows that you speak very well. So one thing that I feel like can improve immediately for that speaking, which will also help with your um, reading, is the read aloud. I don't think you're doing the read aloud properly. I think there's something wrong with the way you're doing it. I don't think it's English. Um, so you have to get that checked. Okay, somebody's got to see how you're doing that read aloud. And by improving the read aloud, you're going to improve that speaking. By improving that speaking, you're also going to improve the reading score. So that's going to um, boost your confidence a little bit more because the speaking will be most likely over 79 and that reading will be either over 79 or very close to it. Then you're just left with listening and writing. Now for that listening and writing, for me, from what it looks like, the writing is actually not that good. Now, if I focus on the writing, I would focus on the summaries more than the essays. The reason is because the summaries actually also affect your reading and your listening score. I always focus on the tasks that affect multiple modules. Now, if you improve the essay, it only improves the writing. So that's why I would say that's not the most important part. And I made a video recently explaining that um, I was able to get 84 on the real exam with a horrible essay. So you can check that out as I explain how I did that. Now, if you improve the summary writing, it's going to improve that listening. But the, the task that actually has the most points for listening and for writing will be that write from dictation. Improving write from dictation will drastically change the listening score and drastically change that writing, especially that writing. So if you had to choose on which one you wanted to focus on more, I would pick the write from dictation. I hope that helps. And now we're going to look at a score that's a little bit different from what I always talk about. I always mention that in order for you to improve that writing score, you got to focus on that reading and that listening. Well, this one is going to be different because technically we should be able to get that writing score without improving the reading and the listening. So let's take a look at this. Here we have Damon. Damon, you have high speaking, high listening. Now, listening is borderline. It's over 79. But hey, if we can pass with that, that's fine. What I'm focusing on would be that writing and that reading. Um, from what I can see here, is that the summary writing is not maximized. And I think we can actually get enough points to hit over 79 by improving the summary, which is the summarized written text. It seems like we're not getting um, what we need from there. The reason I'm pointing this out is because the summarized written text, or any of the summaries, or any of the writing, they're the easiest to improve. So I would say that by improving it, you should be able to get the additional three points. However, if you don't feel safe by hovering around 80 points, then that's where you want to take a look at the reading and the listening. But as of right now, if you feel confident that you consistently get around 80s in that listening, 
then I think improving that summary writing, summarized written text, it will increase that writing score and that um, reading score to right around 79. Um, still risky, so maybe you want to also take a look at the reading and writing fill in the blanks because that will also contribute to that writing score to make you feel more comfortable. That way you can make sure that you get a little bit over that 79 rather than just hover around it. All right. All right. The next score is something you don't see often. Everything is over 79 except for the writing. How could that be? I always talk about how we can't get 79 in the writing unless you do well in the reading and that listening. Well, this person's got over 79 in the reading and the listening, then how come the writing is low? I think you know where I'm going with this. So let's take a look. We have Aman here. Aman, you are two points shy of that 79 in the writing. What the hell? Everything else is well over 79. Good work. And how do we get the rest of the writing points? That is so weird. Why don't we have the 79? Well, it seems to me that you're in the same situation. You also didn't maximize the summary writing. So two points, definitely obtainable. We can definitely obtain the additional two points by improving the summary writing. And the reason why I'm pointing out the summary is again because they are the easiest to improve. But by improving the summaries, you're only going to get just around 79 or a little bit over. But if you're not comfortable with that, you can focus on the reading and the listening as well. That will get you well over 79. But if you feel confident, improving the summaries can get right around the 79 or a little bit over 79 or 80, then um, just do that. Um, for insurance though, you can do reading and listening. I hope that helps. I just realized that the next score is quite similar. Now I've seen a pattern here, so I'm going to address something. Um, I'll talk about it when I show you this score. So let's take a look. Okay, so here we have Rajesh and Rajesh is very close to the 79. The, the main thing is the listening and the writing that's under it. And one thing that stands out for me right now is the summary writing. So that's about three or four times now that I've talked about summary writing. That's the most I've ever talked about. So I'm noticing a pattern. So I want to ask you guys something. If you are having difficulty with the summaries, are you guys using the technique where um, you basically copy and paste, copy and paste the sentences from the summaries and you link it together with like a and or something like that? If you're using that technique, you have to be aware of what you're copying. Like, are you correctly copying sentences um, that can be linked together? Because if you're not familiar with how sentences can be linked, it might not be um, working out for you. All right, and that's, that's the consistency or the inconsistency that I have noticed with copying and pasting the sentences. That's why I actually have a tutorial on summarized written text um, on YouTube where I teach how to do it, but I actually paraphrase. I always recommend paraphrasing because if you don't know how to copy the correct sentence or you don't know how a sentence is structured, it's not going to work well for you. I mean, I do have another technique that is not on YouTube, but that's only in my courses. It's even easier, but I'm pretty sure the one on YouTube should already be easy enough if you know how to write sentences. So you can check that out. But Rajesh, based on the score right here, I think we can get the 79. Um, it's close. It's close. I think we can get the 79 just by improving the summaries. But just to be safe, you definitely want to put some insurance on that. So what I mean is you want to make sure you focus on the reading and the listening. All the tasks that affect your writing score. And again, that's going to be the listening fill in the blanks, write from dictation, and reading and writing fill in the blanks. Okay, um, make sure you're well over 79. I, I don't feel comfortable with most of those just being at around 79. I would try to get those a little bit over. Okay, the last score we're going to look at is a little bit different from the other scores that we have already seen. Now, this person also, everything is almost over 79 except for the reading. But in previous scores, I said that to improve that reading, maybe it was speaking, maybe it was the writing. But this person right here, it's only reading. So let's take a look at it. Here we have Darsh. Darsh, everything is over 79. Speaking is maxed out. The writing itself, um, good enough. Now, the, the essay writing is probably uh, not that good, but hey, we don't need any more points in the writing. And improving the essay is not going to improve anything else besides the writing. So we're good to go. Forget about the writing. So when this happens with the reading at 76, this is when I say it's not mainly the reading and writing fill in the blanks. I don't think you need to work on that. So besides the reading and writing fill in the blanks, there are two other tasks that have a lot of points for the reading and only the reading. 
that is the reading fill in the blanks and the reorder paragraphs. And from my experience, usually when you have scores like these, with everything else is over 79 and it's just the reading, but it's not reading and writing fill in the blanks, it's usually reorder paragraphs. Because reorder paragraphs, you miss the sequence, you miss, miss one pair, you probably lose a lot of points. You probably only get one point out of the whole thing. So I would say put a lot of focus on the reorder paragraphs and then maybe a little bit on um, reading fill in the blanks. But I would assume you're doing well in the reading fill in the blanks because you did well in the reading and writing fill in the blanks. I hope that helps you. All right, there you have it. Those are the score assessments for this week. Once again, if you want me to take a look at your score to see what areas you need to improve, drop a comment after this video. I'll try to take as many scores as I can from the first day. And if it's not 10, then I'll take more from days after. So how do you get to put your scores on the first day? Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, so you get a notification when I post videos. And then you just go on and put your uh, score in the comments and that will be on the first day. All right, please remember to drop a like on this video and check out my other tutorials. I'll be seeing you guys on the next one. Peace.